Hello everyone. It has been a long time since I have cooked with you and I miss it. Uh, I am Jenny Breen. I am a market chef at Mill City Farmers Market and summer is cruising along. Markets are exploding with delicious produce and I am here to talk about some simple delicious things that you can do with that produce. So I'm going to do this video in a few pieces just because that will be a little easier for you all to see everything that I'm doing. And I'm starting with just prepping my vegetables. So I'm going to make a simple summer stir fry. Um, it's cooled down enough in the middle of July. It was a little hot. I didn't want to turn my stove on at all but it's cooled down enough. In fact, today it's a little rainy out there. And so some hot dishes or cooking on the stove is a little more enjoyable. And we have so much produce. We have so many delicious vegetables to work with that you can do this recipe with pretty much anything. So I have right now, because this is what I have both from the market and from my own garden, I have a bunch of broccoli. I have, broccoli greens, the things we often just throw away, we can totally consume. They're as delicious and nutritious as other greens. I have kale, a really soft, delicate kind of kale that's growing in my garden. And I have beet greens. I'm not putting the beets in the stir fry, although you could, but I have the greens from the beets, which we don't want to toss. I also have some corn, uh, and I'm gonna actually pull that open so I can use it. I have some cherry tomatoes. Again, these are sun golds and these are what I have, but any tomato would work. I've got beautiful red onion. I have some carrots. I've got some fresh garlic. I have some ginger, which is not from Minnesota, although there is Minnesota ginger. This is not Minnesota ginger. And I have eggplant. So that's what I have to work with and that's fine. That's what I'm gonna work with. But if you have green beans or bell peppers or cauliflower or really anything, zucchini, things that we know there's a lot of right now, feel free to throw this in as well. Um, so the first thing though is that we wanna cut things appropriately for a stir fry. So just like any other kind of prep, we wanna think about what we're making ahead of time so that we cut whatever it is appropriately for that dish. If I was gonna make a stew, where I was cooking these things for a long time, slowly in liquid, I would wanna cut them in big chunks so that they didn't fade away and disappear as they cooked. Stir fry is something that you cook pretty quickly on a higher heat in oil, in a more shallow pan. And so you wanna make sure you're cutting your vegetables appropriately so that they'll cook. And again, when I say cook, I want them to cook, but not cook a lot. These vegetables are delicious, fresh, tender already, so I'm not trying to overcook them, but I do wanna slightly cook them, I wanna heat them through, I wanna caramelize them a little bit, and I wanna do that fast. And in order to do that, that means cutting them kind of in thin, long pieces. Julienne is one word for that. I'm not gonna get that precise, I'm not gonna worry about things being exactly the same width and length, but I am thinking in terms of long and thin. So, with good knife technique, with the tip of my knife on the cutting board and holding it really firmly right up close where the handle meets the blade. I'm gonna use a nice gentle rocking motion just back and forth. It shouldn't be noisy, it should just be nice and smooth. I'm gonna start with my onion, which I have already used some of, so it's already peeled and has a flat edge. And I'm gonna actually cut a hunk of it first just to make it easier on myself because it's a big onion and then I'm just gonna cut, this is fairly long pieces. If I wanted to, I could go the other way and do shorter, thinner pieces. But the point is, I want them to be nice and thin. They don't have to be so thin that I um, would put them in a salad, right? When I'm using them raw, I want them really, really, really thin. They can be a little thicker than that because they are gonna cook, but I don't want them in big fat chunks. So there's my onions. Same thing with all my vegetables. I'm going for long and thin. So with the carrots, I'll cut just the very tip off. Again, these are very, very tender. So I'm gonna go kind of at an angle and just get those cut 
This is kind of a tough one to cut that way. Got to do a, a double there. Uh, but I'm just going to cut long, thin pieces with my eggplant. Same thing, even though this is a fairly small eggplant, I'm actually going to cut it down the middle so I can get long, thin pieces. And this, you know, the skin's going to be a little tough on this. Um, and this is not... Um, I didn't pick this yesterday, I'll just say, so it's a little softer. But again, I want that to be thin. I don't want these to be undercooked, especially eggplant, which has a little bitterness to it. I wanna make sure it caramelizes and cooks down. Um, my broccoli, and again, this is very fresh, very local broccoli, so I don't really need to take the outer peel off like I would if it was California broccoli in January. Um, and it would be much tougher. So this is very, very tender. So I'm really gonna use all the stem. And that same thing, I'm cutting kind of at an angle, thin pieces and long. And then I can leave the florets a little bit longer too. Um, so just getting it ready to go in there all together. Obviously the corn, I won't cut that way. The corn, I'm just going to actually cut right off the cob. So again, you want to make sure you have your good sharp knife. Do it slowly because if you do it fast, the corn will go flying all over the place. So just again, a nice gentle gliding motion down the side of the corn. And with my cherry tomatoes, and I don't always put tomatoes in a stir fry because they're really wet and they do make it a little um, soupy. So these are going to go in at the very end, probably after I turn the heat off because I don't really want them to cook down into mush. I want to bite into them and taste that wonderful juicy sweetness. Um, but I am going to just cut them in half. So I like to go parallel to where the stem was as opposed to across, uh, if that makes sense. So you get a cross section of the tomato uh, and that's what I'm going to do but those are going to go in as I said really close to the end and then with my greens I'm just going to pull them right off the stem these are also very tender and the truth is I could eat the stem the stem is pretty tender too in this case usually kale stems are pretty tough but I'm going to just pull them off the stem just for my own preference uh, and then I can save that stem for soup stock or um, for a stir fry where I might want to throw it in or a soup. Uh, beet greens, I, the stems are so thin, I'm not even going to pull them off. And one last thing I'm going to mention before I move on to the next part is my carrot tops. So we are getting carrots with the tops on. Don't throw those away, save those, and I'm going to show you how to make a pesto with them.